Thanks to everyone who came to learn more about this program. Um, very possible that you'll be exploring some of the different fields within our, our advanced healthcare practice uh, uh, master's level degree program at Western. So I'm pleased that you came to, to join today and learn a little bit about the pain management field. So start just as an introduction. My name is Dave Walton. I am a professor with the School of Physical Therapy and cross appointed to the Department of Psychiatry at Western University in London, Ontario. My, as you might expect, uh, primary research and my, my education and even my clinical experience and expertise is in the field of pain and pain management. Um, I've, been, I've been working in the pain field now for, for over 20 years. Uh, my primary focus is in the area of musculoskeletal pain, so things like back pain and neck pain and, and post-traumatic pain. Um, and I also spend a lot of time working in the area of how we measure pain and trying to better understand the pain experience of another person. I am the field leader for the Interdisciplinary Pain Management uh, degree program. I am fortunate, however, to be joined by a number of, of quite distinguished uh, facilitators and faculty who, who uh, pop into the program at various points throughout it, such that you, uh, learners have an opportunity to hear from more people than just me. Uh, we have 60 minutes today. Uh, I don't know if we're going to need the whole time or not. I've got about seven or eight slides here that are intended to just give a, a general overview of what this program is and what can, you can expect and then uh, as much time as we need for questions after that. So you'll see the outline here, what we're gonna talk about. I'll start with an overview of the program, um, give you sort of the, the key competencies that scaffold some of the, the things that we discuss in the program. I'll get into some of the details around things like time commitment and expectation, uh, high level uh, addressing of some, some of the key dates that you'll need to keep an eye on. And then, like I say, lots of time for, for questions. So as I say, this program is one of now several fields and a growing number of fields within our one-year advanced healthcare practice master's level degree program at Western within the Faculty of Health Sciences. Again, some of you might be familiar with some of the other fields. There's one, there's uh, comprehensive musculoskeletal physiotherapy, there's uh, wound healing, there's upper extremity rehabilitation, sport and exercise medicine. So quite a number of, of different fields depending on your interests. Uh, some of the courses uh, within every field are shared such that we'll all have the opportunity to learn alongside students in those other fields and other courses are field specific, uh, which is why you want to make the decision uh, that fits best for you and your interests. Uh, so for our field, uh, it is unique. This is the only program of its type in, in at least in Canada. It's a one year online uh, master's level degree program. Uh, targeted at what we're calling pain professionals, and I'll explain that momentarily. And specifically, it is interdisciplinary. So the goal is that uh, we have an opportunity to learn with, from, and about others who might see the field of, of pain and pain management and all of the things that go alongside that through different sets of eyes. Um, You'll see there the eligibility. This has been expanded for this year. So prior to this year, the eligibility was limited to um, uh, regulated health professionals. It is uh, now open to, uh, again, regulated health professionals. In addition, anyone who has a professional role related to pain is now welcome to join. So these could be um, uh, health leaders, for example, could be policymakers or decision makers. So people, perhaps people in the insurance industry, uh, educators are eligible, pain researchers are eligible, um, or people with a professional role related to advocacy or activism in around pain. Uh, the, the part of the application process will be to demonstrate uh, whatever that link is. Uh, what, we, what we don't want here is that this is a, um, a program where, where you know, people in pain are coming to sort of find solutions. Uh, this is really a, a program dedicated to um, pain scholarship and, and becoming uh, stronger leaders in, uh, in the understanding and the application and implementation of good pain related science. You can see sort of the, the broad program goals here. We really do our best to uh, integrate aspects of real world impact here. Uh, we don't want this to just be sort of another degree that you hang on your wall. Uh, so a lot of the learning within the program is, uh, is competency based. Uh, so that will be um, actually doing things, um, creating knowledge, creating products that can um, 
hopefully be implemented to help people in pain in your communities. Uh, we are hoping that we, uh, through the program, we're facilitating the development of leaders. Um, so those who go through the program are leaders and person-centered partners in pain management. And again, that need not be direct per, um, you know, patient care, um, but certainly, I mean, pain management, as I'm sure you can all appreciate, um, integrates so many different, different things, as I say, from leadership through education, research, advocacy, and direct care. We want to make sure that within this program, uh, learners feel safe, uh, safe sometimes to try out different ways of thinking about pain, uh, safe to challenge their own biases and their own um, perspectives and, and prior experiences on this and, and to learn with, from, and about peers who will hold other distinct uh, worldviews and views on the es um, issues related to pain than you will with the goal of everyone becoming richer, um, myself and the, and the leaders of the program included, by virtue of having learned um, other ways of, of understanding pain. There's a strong emphasis on critical thinking within this course and this program, which I think in today's sort of post-truth world uh, feels increasingly important. And so uh, again, we, we are doing our best to enable the development of people who know how to not only read let's say research literature or, or lay literature, but also to appraise it for its trustworthiness and determine whether or not it's actually something that needs to be actioned. And the other sort of undergirding focus here is some, some personalization of the learning journey, uh, such that not everybody will take the exact same journey, but we should all still end up at the same point. The specific criteria I've got here, I've actually just taken directly from the program website. So um, I, I needn't necessarily go through too much detail here. You can find that online if you wish, but you'll you'll see some of the high level bits. So you do require a bachelor, at least an undergraduate degree from a recognized university. Um, when you say advanced computer skills, you ought to be able to, for example, know how to use Zoom, which if you're here today, you know how to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, understanding um, you know, ideally, you're not someone who's scared away by uh, by too much technology, for example. Uh, you do require two references. Um, if you've been if you graduated from university within the past five years, one of those references will need to be an academic reference um, and at least one professional reference. You will need if you're coming from a non English uh, first country, you'll need to demonstrate English language proficiency in both oral and written. And again, there's information on how to do that on the website. And as I've said already, you'll need to be a, a licensed and regulated health professional or hold a professional role related to uh, leadership and pain management. If there are any questions around whether your role is eligible, then I will be providing my email address at the end of this presentation and you're welcome to reach out to me. Just a couple of high level statistics to date. We've had 25 people already now go through this program. And what's really exciting to me is those 12 people have represented, or sorry, 25 people have represented 12 different um, health disciplines at the time. And you can see them listed there. Everything from sort of mainstream orthodox uh, um, healthcare through to what might be considered complementary and alternative medicine. We've got two papers published on the program. I'll make sure that these links are shared uh, afterwards if you're interested in exploring some of the experiences of the first cohort to go through this. Now, that was uh, six years ago now, but you're welcome to explore those. We have had one of our, uh, our prior alumni publish their paper from their uh, capstone project, which I'll talk about in a minute. So there is an opportunity here for those of you who might have an interest in, say, building a CV that demonstrates publication. There is an opportunity to pursue that. And other than that, we've got alumni who have taken on a variety of roles, um, whether that be in education, in uh, implementing new practice or even new programs uh, for pain management, uh, brokering of good knowledge uh, for the professional college or association, mentorship, uh, various leadership roles and a number of others. So these are the kinds of directions that people take after the program. I mentioned there's there's five core competencies or key competencies that sort of undergird and scaffold many of the decisions that we've made in developing this program. And you can see them there. As you might expect, pain expertise, of course, is, is one of the central one. We'd expect that people come out of the program having a better and stronger understanding of pain, what it is, what it isn't, how we can know it and how we cannot know it uh, than when they came in. But there are four others that have been deemed important uh, competencies for being effective in any kind of professional pain related role. So those include empathic reasoning, interdisciplinary collaboration, critical thinking, and then self-awareness and reflexivity. And 
those who are in the program will see how those competencies are kind of embedded within it uh, as we go through. And so, again, coming out on the other side, our goal is not only to have sort of people who have developed higher level understanding and expertise in pain, but also uh, been able to demonstrate each of those other four competencies. As far as the specifics of the of the program, you can see there. So there are uh, there are seven total credits right now in, in the program as it stands. So there are two field based courses. These are the the pain content specific courses. These are uh, unique to our field. So those in, in any of the other uh, advanced healthcare practice fields are not eligible to take these two courses. So you can see the first one is special topics in interprofessional pain management and advanced topics in interprofessional pain management. Um, if anyone's interested, I have course outlines. Um, I'm, I'm working on, on revising those now, but I can share the ones from prior years just to give a general sense of the type of content that's covered in those. I also mentioned that there are two courses that are I'm calling them program wide. So students in all of the AHCP fields uh, take these courses together. So one of them is a critical appraisal of literature course, and the other one is currently called advanced professional practice. Um, both of those courses, I will say, are, as we speak, currently undergoing revision, so they will probably get different names, but the concepts are there. So one of them will be really on a, about, as I say earlier, um, appraising and understanding and interpreting uh, health research and understanding how to implement it and then evaluate the impact of that implementation. And then the other one is going to be around sort of broad leadership um, and advanced practice um, skills and competencies. Students in our program will also choose uh, two elective courses from a list that is uh, I've linked to there. There's a number of, of courses. These are all online asynchronous courses. And uh, again, I'll make sure that you have the, the, the slides here so you can access that, uh, that link. Um, there's at least, I want to say 12 or 14 different course options there now. So you'll need to select two of those. And then finally is a capstone project. Dependent on your interests and what you want to accomplish from a degree like ours, that capstone project can take on uh, different forms. It could be a research project, if that's something of interest to you. Could be an implementation project or a quality improvement project. Could be developing advocacy or activism type resources, um, hosting a conference. There's, there's a number of different shapes and forms that this capstone could take. And this is part of the personalization of your learning journey. Yeah, um, I'm happy to, I can actually ask, answer a question super quick of the one that just popped up in Q&A. Someone asked if one has previously completed another of the HCP field uh, degree programs, do you need to repeat the critical appraisal course? And the answer is no, which might come as a relief. For specifics, just to give you a general sense of what you can expect time-wise, I've broken it down by term. So at Western, our full academic year is broken into three uh, terms. So the fall term, the September to December, you can see we start with our first uh, special topics in pain course. That is a synchronous course. And I want to be clear on that. This does occasionally cause challenge for those who are in different time zones uh, other than the Eastern time zone in Canada. So just something to keep in mind. I do my best to identify a time that is feasible for all um, members, but again, dependent on where people are joining us from, and especially as we're increasing the internationalization of this program, I acknowledge this is going to become more and more challenging. So I'll be keen to see who applies to the program this year and the, the way to which we're able to, uh, to make this happen. But I do think, I mean, as part of an interdisciplinary learning program, you need to have the opportunity to learn alongside your peers. So they can't all be uh, asynchronous. So we do have this synchronous course. It's typically about two hours a week. It's online. And for that, we're joined by, uh, by a variety of different facilitators from a number of fields. Uh, again, medicine, advocacy, social work, um, psychology, uh, myself, of course. Um, so, so a variety of different topics that you'll be exposed to. Also in that first term is the critical appraisal course. Now that one is largely asynchronous. Uh, the Now, again, this is being revised right now. So anything I say, take with a slight grain of salt. But uh, in the past, the course manager for that has held live sort of tutorial sessions that you could join if you wanted. 
but the rest of the course could be completed uh, on your own time. You'll see the electives are showing both in the fall and winter term. That's because it's very much dependent on what electives you choose and when those are being offered um, and as far in, and time commitment and all that kind of thing. So it's hard for me to say exactly what that time commitment will be. And then the capstone project will officially start in the fall term. Again, dependent on the project, there will probably be a period of the year where there's more work to be done and another period of the year where there's less work to be done. In the winter term, we carry on with our advanced topics course. So that will sort of roll right from the fall term into the winter term. We'll probably keep the same timing as long as it's working for everyone. That advanced professional practice and leadership course will also happen in the winter term. And again, the electives and capstone, like I say, are very much dependent on, on your selection and your, your project. And what that leaves then for the summer term really is, is a focus on the capstone project, wrapping that up, um, creating the final product, which is most commonly a written product of some type. And there will be a presentation day for the capstone projects in July. There are two special options I just want to uh, bring to your awareness. And these, uh, these are actually new for this year, so I'm quite excited about it. Those who are uh, health professionals, regulated health professionals, can choose to pursue training and credentialing through the Canadian Academy of Pain Management. Uh, they have, again, an online asynchronous, I think it's 16 modules uh, that you would go through. There's an exam to sit at the end. Uh, there is a small additional fee. We have negotiated with CAPM for that to be the student rate, which I wanna say is somewhere between 200 and 400 Canadian dollars. So it's not, not egregious, but it's an additional fee. I've got the link there if anyone's interested in more information on what this is. Those who do decide to go through the CAPM credentialing can use that to replace, effectively replace one of the elective, one of the two elective credits. So then you would, if you were to do that, you would only need one additional elective credit. The other option, special option for those who might be interested, especially those in more leadership roles, is the Certified Healthcare Executive Credentialing. And again, I've got the link there where that uh, explains a lot more information on it than what I can, de I can describe. For those who want to go through that, the biggest change would be for the capstone project, but it will also affect uh, one or two of the courses that you take. Um, not, not the field-specific courses, but some of those others. Um, it will affect that. Uh, I'm going to come to that question here in a moment. I'm almost through the slides. Uh, as far as key dates to keep in mind, so the application portal is actually open now. Um, so you can start you can start to prepare an application anytime. Uh, I've got the link to the website here on the next slide. We typically go through and review the applicants and we send out invitations for those to join um, in around May. Uh, we try not to make it later than May. In fact, I try to get them out earlier than that so people have time to plan. The program start is officially September 1st. Um, I can't tell you right off the top of my head what day of the week that is, but we typically have our first course, uh, our first class within the first week or two of September with obviously an intended end of August uh, 31st. And then for those who are successful, convocation, if you wish to attend, would be in October of 2026. And Western always does a really nice convocation ceremony. And so this is my last slide. And again, I'm gonna make sure that you have access to these slides. So this has information on the program website specifically, if you'd like to go and get more information there. And there's quite a bit of detail on the website. If you have general questions around process, um, how to apply, costs, things like that, uh, then your best bet is to email um, the, uh, the AHCP office. And however, if you have specific questions on the program itself, such as your eligibility, for example, that is my email address. You are welcome to contact me.